so good afternoon everyone and so before beginning i want to check if i'm audible and are my slides visible to you so please can somebody put in chat or so that we can get started so uh someone from access please check if that that i am able to see in the slide so see that if the slides are visible and they are actually you can see yeah so i want to raise my voice a bit low okay i'm going to increase the mic volume okay how is it now what about now am i audible now so there is a quite delay there is a quite delay between my live stream and what you are able to see so most of the people have said yes so i hope and i am assuming that i am audible now and let's get started cool great so someone says my voice is now uh, okay so let's get in start let's get started and i'm opening the slides and i'll be controlling it so as you know so access has invited me to give this pro inside chapter 1 talk and i'll be going through some topics that you are able to see here so so the ad agenda for today uh, let me reduce my size a little bit so you are able to see the si slides okay okay so uh, agenda for today is like i'm going to introduce myself in short and my engineering journey of 4 years after that i'm going to talk about my uh, goldman sachs interviewing experience and how i cracked it we, after that i'll be giving some general interview tips it, like it's applicable for goldman sachs as well or for any any company it will be it's a generic tips for interv interviews after that demystifying computer science and important importance of core cs subjects in interview so these are these topics will be i'll be telling it in line and this is ideally targeted towards the second year students like who have just completed the first year and who will be studying this subjects so i'm going to tell some real life examples so after that you will enjoy learning these subjects and you will actually get the practical sense like why we are learning these subjects after that uh, this was the contain and after that like i have received so, so access had sent some google forms where they had asked questions and based on that question i have designed the further slides like these are the topics like computer uh, programming versus development placement preparation suggested plan for second year suggested plan for third year and some add ons are there and after that there are like more questions that i'll be answering and after that like will be will i will be enabling the chat again and i'll be taking the live questions as well so let's get started and what i'm going to do is now i'm going to disable the chat so that once i am completed with the content we can move towards the live chat and the questions if you are having any so okay i've disabled the chat now so let's get started so introduction and journey so why this is important like you might have read a lot of blogs like people creating top product companies and all what you might see similar is like they will tell like uh, we did coding throughout nights and days and how we cracked the interviews but no one tells the what the starting point 
point was and at the beginning how are they are like at the beginning everyone is a beginner we can consider everyone as a noob so what i'm going to do is i'm going to share first year journey and the motive of this is at the end you will be able to see like this guy can do it like anyone can do it so let's start with my first year so in so when i got entered into alchin college in the first lecture itself i was i was late and i was not allowed in the class so this is how my engineering journey started and after that so i went to the second lecture so for this lecture i went on actually on time and i was entered in the class and so i was like fascinated to learn about this computer science and engineering course like i am ha- i was happy like i got this branch and for four years i'll be learning this computer science but what happened was like when i entered for the second lecture the lecture was actually the basic mechanical engineering so i was surprised like why basic mechanical engineering is there like i am here for computer science was in i mean i asked people around myself like are we in the computer science class is it not a wrong class and questions like that so i didn't get answers as well i just asked some persons sitting beside me and front desks and all after that the third lecture was again basic electronics engineering so i was surprised again and when i chatted with few more people i came to know that throughout the first year we are going to study like all computer uh, all branches of engineering are going to have same curriculum and we are going to study all the subjects like basic electronics mechanical and we are going to study physics chemistry as and everything else so like i was finally happy after 11th and 12th that i'm not going to see physics or chemistry and i'm going to do some development i'm going to learn some coding and programming and all but this was the scene so i was quite sad about that so that was the scene of my first year of engineering after that there was access gim in first week where in i got to know like a lot of domains of computer science different domains are there i got to know about technology they had shown some really cool videos and all and there were like talks by seniors and all from which i got inspired and because of this what happened was like we go to the fourth point that is workshops so in first year what i did, did was i started attending workshops from uh, different workshop of based on domains for example i had went to coiv mind spark to attend a workshop on ethical hacking and cyber security i had also went to iit bombay for tech fest in first year itself for the app development workshop i was not knowing anything so for app development you might know that java is required and programming and everything is required i was not knowing even c but still i just out of curiosity i had went to attend such workshops uh, and besides that i also attended some workshop in our college so this is one good part we can say i i did in the first first year besides that most of the rest of the year was failures and stuff and sadness of course so i uh, i had interviewed for one club and i was so it was my first interview and it was for member of one of the technical club i went there and i got badly rejected so what i did was like i was not knowing c and anything so i didn't had really anything to put on my resume so what i did before going to interview i saw some videos of python programming language for like very short time like 10 15 minutes and i had written python in my skills so like the guys who were taking the interview completely roasted me on python what stuff i was knowing was like it's like the file extension is py and maybe hello world such kind of stuff i was knowing and i had written it in my skills so what happened was i was obviously roasted and i was rejected so one lesson i learned here was we should never lie on our resume or we should not put anything that we are not confident enough and that might put in trouble like you you might have 10 things you might have written and for nine things you are confident but one thing is there like you are not confident enough and what if your interview goes on that one particular thing so you will be rejected right so that's the thing so besides that so it was one of the failure like i was get rejected by the club and out in round ones what i mean by this is like uh, there are local programming contest right in uh, colleges like we have in our college also besides that i had to went when i went to minds park i also participated in the coding contest and everywhere else like whatever college i attended what happened was like the structure of the round you might be knowing first there will be an aptitude test so after that there will be actual coding rounds so like first round will be aptitude test second round will be coding round uh, and third round will be again a long coding round or rapid co- coding round such was the structure and all of the contests that i attended during my first year i got rejected or i was eliminated in the first round itself so this was my scene because i was not studying properly i was like quite disappointed like i am not getting favorite subjects there was c programming but overall i was sad so 
I didn't like I was not motivated to do that, that as well. Besides that, one 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 more thing is like I had failed in three subjects. Yes, right. So I had failed in uh, basic mechanical engineering. I had failed in chemistry. I had even failed in math. So uh, obviously, I cleared that in the makeup examinations. But uh, this was the thing. Like uh, I had a lot of failures and I had failed in three subjects as well in the first year itself. And again, I got like a little bit sad. And overall, it was not good. And failing in three subjects obviously gets your pointer to some six point something. So that's what the six point thumb something means. And after that, I was not social person. So even in GIMs or everywhere, I had like a couple of friends from my 11, 12 colleges. Only I was interacting with them, and I was not at all interacting with other people and stuff. So this was my journey of first year. So then the second year came. So what good thing was I recognized that I'm not going in the right direction. So I had contacted some seniors like uh, during SciTech I had made Omkar Zado and like uh, many other seniors. I interacted with them and I got to know like what has actually what needs to be done actually and what I'm doing, why I'm feeling all that stuff. And I got actually aware. So you can see like I have written the state in first year. I have written state as new. So actually I'm relating this with the states of processes in operating system. So uh, access recently conducted and workshop or seminar a big seminar which was based on operating system so you might have studied like the states of operating system so uh, I have related it li like that like first year the state is new and now second year my state is ready so I got aware and after getting aware so this was what I did in second year so in second year I have written like in first year I was thrown out of the first lecture itself in second year I was what I was doing was read before lecture so uh, what the thing was uh, in second year we had first lecture at 10 a.m. of uh, Bandari ma'am it was a data structures uh, lecture so I, w I had not studied C right in the first year so I was not knowing it well and while studying data structures C is a prerequisite C, C programming language so they will talk about structure and node and I was not getting anything so what I did was like the lectures were at 10 p 10 a.m. but I used to visit college at 9 a.m. and from 9 to 10 I was reading that book let us see so which is about C programming language so I didn't study even C at first year and I had to study this like before data structure lectures I was go going in college and I was uh, reading this let us see and after that on later after a month or so I started getting knowledge from the lectures as well and then it is finally CSE like uh, first it was like is this CSE and now it is like yeah finally CSE I was happy but uh, I didn't do the fundamental subjects well because uh, I was not knowing why what's the real life application of them so like if like while studying operating system or oh, what is this process what is this bankers algorithm what is deadlock they tell the examples but we I was like unable to relate it with real life and it was no fun at all so this was the thing after that actually I started coding in winter vacation that was after three semesters are completed so second year first semester was completed it was December I was at home here we were having vacation winter vacations and then I actually started coding so before that I had an account on hacker rank I might have uh, done some hello world program or area of some uh, area, some of area program but not actually I didn't started well and what like in second year first semester's vacation I actually started in December so after three semester completed I actually started the coding part so I was doing hacker rank practice problems uh, so throughout the December I solved problems from arrays and strings uh, and that I get like introduced like at initial phases like like they say like start is always the hardest so I was spending like five to six hours solving a simple array problem that like you guys or anyone can solve in like two to three minutes so that was the progress like it's very hard at the starting after that so winter vacation was completed and I went to college for the fourth, fourth semester and after that I started participating in the code shift long challenges so it was I think January or February uh, which was my first long challenge so actually started participating in the long challenges of code shift so I'm going to talk about like competitive programming versus problem solving what is actually required in for the slides but I started this uh, and the long challenges so this is where like the learning curve was great I got to know a lot of problem solving tricks and a lot of concepts lot of algorithms even I I had not studied it as a part of data structures or algorithm but while solving problems on the long challenge I got to know a lo lot of problems lot of concepts so besides that local contest so as I said I was getting eliminated in the first round itself in this second year 
I started clearing FT. Like I, as I said, I was reading before the lecture, so I, I was knowing at least C. So in first year and second year, we are in the no voice category. So the aptitude is based on C programming language. So I was finally at least able to crack the aptitude test, but I was not able to win. Like I was practicing, I was maybe solving couple of problems in the contest, but that was the thing. After that, finally, at the end of second year, there was local contest code crush, which was in our college itself, Anshul College of Engineering. So there I got the first prize. So this is the only time where uh, our legendary programmer Rajay Gunzal had been below me in the leaderboard. So this was the thing like, so this was my first win in the computer programming and the local contest it was. So after that, I've written CP greater than development. So I'm not saying like computer programming is greater than development. I'm saying that in the second year, throughout the second year, I was doing more computer programming and less development. So not at all, actually, I didn't start it at all the development. So I was just doing computer programming, the long challenges, practice on hacker rank and some local contests. After that, like I had seen this TV series that Silicon Valley, which I got like really inspired by this TV series. And I got really uh, passionate about technology more like than I was previous and eventually uh, finally at the at the start of end sem I got to know importance of subjects and I in end sem I did well and finally I got, got pointer of like eight point something so from eight, six point something it's eight point something now and I was getting social with the people I was in the CSE class I was interacting with people uh, I had like uh, previously I was just living with my, a couple of friends of uh, my 11 12 college but in second year, I was living with like eight or nine people. So there was interaction in the class. I was interaction. Besides that, I was also appointed as assistant secretary of access. So I become a lot of social after that. So that was the thing. Okay. So this was the first year and the second year. So now it's third year and fourth year. Now the states it's running. So the process was created. Now then it was in ready states, and now it's actually running state. So uh, this is my uh, summary of third and fourth year. I had like uh, cleared this CCD SAP certification. It is Core Chef Certified Data Structures and Algorithm Program. This was at the uh, fifth semester. I guess. Yeah, this was the foundation level exam. And once I cracked it, like uh, I got enough confidence that. I can like crack any uh, coding round at least in the college visiting companies. So after that, I stopped participating in the long challenges and I was like more into uh, learning development and doing projects. So here I've written like CP is less than development and projects. So I was doing a lot less CP and more of projects and development stuff. So after that, I've written smile at a CS fundamental because uh, I also got to know the real life application while doing the projects and also, we had placements after third year, right? So we have to revise the stuff. So I was not actually revising. I was doing it for the first time. So that was the scene that. So finally, I did that. After that, I was like appointed as president of access. And after in the fourth year, I was mentor. And these are some of the achievements like uh, runner up in research symposium that uh, our college conducts. Uh, one of the like, this is the major achievement of mine, which is winner of Smart India Hackathon winner of global blockchain hackathon winner and plus incubation of imagine hackathon so this was a uh, intercollege hackathon then i got a chance to uh, get I at icpc regionals as well before besides that i had all india rank of nine in Tegi code wizards after that like uh, as i told like i was not participating in the long challenges and well but we need to be in touch in competitive programming so access was conducting the code fusion global for first time like we have local code fusion and we share some private links with uh, students in our college we were first time hosting this code fusion at a global level on code chef platform so i was a problem one of the problem setter in that contest and after that so the subjects were getting good and i got like sound understanding of other subjects as well which led to nine point something that is the pointer again after that, as I was president and a lot of interaction happened, I was participating in contests and hackathon team was there and a lot of things. So I've written social plus plus. So you can see the difference. Like it was social, social. Uh, it was not social, social and then social plus plus. So th this is the difference. Like how I got like I was very introvert at start, but I got interacting and kind of become extrovert. You can say then at the end of third year, I got placed in Veritas and after that Goldman Sachs. So right now we are uh, going to dive deep into the journey of goldman sachs so before that uh, the significance of this is like 
we are people like always see these these kind of results that we are seeing right now so some winners are getting placed and all but no one tells about the failures and all so what i wanted to make the point here is like if a failure like me can do it like any one of you can do it if you you have to just get aware like you have to just be in this ready state as i mentioned in the second year you just go and contact some seniors and ask them what needs to be done and you will be aware and you will just get it, get started so that was the thing then uh in introduction i will like i just want to tell that this session is not like being just technically sound so life skills are important as well and you need to have a balance only then you will thrive so like if you are like say you are uh, you are develop some passion for coding and you are doing it day and night you are not having social life you are not hanging out with friends and all that won't help you during the interviews like so thriving in the sense i mean like you have to keep a balance between like in industry they call is like work life balance here also you should have balance between like if you are doing and learning stuff you should also enjoy the like like i have said don't miss out fun in your journey so i can definitely say that i have had more trips throughout my four in uh, four years of engineering than the co coding contest have i have participated so this is one thing i can say besides that these are the people like i have mentioned like who have been constant support and really appreciate them and i would like to thank them who like contributed to the result that i got so the pa parents so my hometown is like just 50 kilometers away so the college is in sangli and i live in kolhapur but a parent had given me complete freedom like they were not like uh, telling me it's just 50 kilometer you should come every weekend you should go to family functions and all they had given me my space and they had really supported me from the beginning as well besides that teacher so teachers in walsh college of engineering and even throughout the life so they have like helped me a lot to get things learned the fundamental subjects and everything my roommates have been quite amazing as well so it was a, like a source of uh, inspiration so whenever if any bad day was there anything in the college or anything like there was failure in a contest or something when i uh, went to room like they motivated me as oh my god like it was like amazing it, i was like just uh, forgetting the failures and all and i was getting boosted again so these uh, a great role has been played by my roommates i hope they are uh, not planning to spam during the live chat uh, so besides that friends like friends throughout the uh, school and college and even engineering seniors and juniors so seniors as well so seniors everyone knows like you like you have to get to interact with seniors and seniors have helped a lot of me so as i said in the after the end of first year i got to interact with so there have been at least 20 to 30 seniors like i have been very constantly in touch with like not just just one batch senior to me also two and three batches senior to me so i got like contacts through access because of that like i was able to interact you can like even if you are in other club or you can even contact any of one and they can reach you to the respective person so besides that my batch mates my projects partners were amazing so all of the achievements like i have like uh, written so many achievements here all the three hackathons we had won togetherly so i had like quite amazing project partner swapnil and atharva because of whose my journey was amazing before besides that my hackathon team was there so in one of the hackathon we three were there the project partners besides that in smart india hackathon there were more people and even for principal hackathon which was an inter college hackathon so overall i would like to say live your journey so just not get technically sound and all interact with people have social life and get your friends so in bad times these people are going to help you as always they have okay so let's move forward so let's move to cracking goldman sachs so about goldman sachs i would like to tell so goldman sachs is one of the top global investment bank in the world and it is the day zero company at most of the top iit so you can search just go and google search iit placements you will get get some stats of any of the top iits id bombay delhi and whatever five four five iits are there top and they will have the day zero company goldman sachs will be there and it's like a dream of all lo lot of people in uh, even iit so there are tech companies as well but goldman sachs is also one of them so besides that like go, like go, it's like there has been lot of discussion around around the acceptance rates of goldman sachs so you can even search for uh, goldman sachs acceptance rate and you will get some results like it is compared with hard harvard university i hope you are knowing that and like it is it is a fact that goldman sachs is having acceptance rate less than harvard so that's the thing that was about the company 
and the role was uh, again they call the, the title is analyst but actual role is software engineering so i would like to talk, talk about this program that is engineering campus hiring program so this was the program through which got hired actually goldman sachs uh, was previously just hiring for so uh, some top seven eight iits some top nits and some top national level colleges and they were also visiting for summer internship in some uh, top state level colleges but they were not getting so if like they are not visiting your college you are not able to get to like get even in the process so last year or last last year they started this engineering campus hiring program wherein a uh, student from all over india anyone can, can apply so this program is even live now for the class of 2021 and class of 2022 for 2021 it is full time analyst role and for class of 2022 it is summer internship like it's around 1 to 2 months of summer internship and even there is pp opportunity based on the performance of that so besides that like i will talk about the my process so last year there was engineering campus hiring program they had conducted all india coding test so what things were there in this test so there were two easy to medium level problems the programming problems after that there were around 10 to 15 mcqs these mcqs had a, re a negative marking and they were of so again they were of fundamental subjects like data structure algorithm databases and all and besides that maths probability statistics these are well there and as i told there was negative marking and so after this test was over so uh, sorry i forgot to mention there were more sections there were two essay questions as well so it was like situation based question like uh, if this happened what will you do it was some real life question and we had to actually write an essay in english so that was the thing so it and besides that there was an advanced coding section so it was like a level i can say medium to hard and there was one option so overall there were some 10 15 mcqs two easy to medium problem one uh, medium to hard problem and two essay questions after that uh, they announced the results so after some days we got results and i was the only one from walchand college of engineering and after like we got the results the actual interview process started at goldman sachs campus in bangalore so goldman sachs had sent some like the they had taken care like amazingly they had se sent flight tickets to and fro from Be bangalore and even like the interview process was one day but they have like given amazing accommodation at the five star hotels for three days so prior day of interview and after the uh, interview day so when i reached so at, at day one i reached bangalore i went to hotel and what happened was like there was dinner and all the participants that were selected from this all india test were there and we had some round table dinner some kind of that people from goldman sachs the hr team and all had came and told about the processes and all so what happened at that time was most of the people that i got interacted they were from top nits and nits iits and uh, even if they were some top national colleges they were having offers from amazing top product companies like amazon microsoft and rest so they were either interning or they had full time offer so this was the crowd like people were wearing t-shirts of google microsoft and so at that point i was like very nervous and i was like where do i stand here like i was very nervous at that time and so what i'm so i was thinking like they are such some top minds from the country and what i'm doing here i was and i really got nervous so after that that you know got over and next day we had an interview so the campus team took us from the hotel to uh, gs campus and we had a pre uh, pre placement talk there and what the so what they said at the end of the talk so overall the talk was very motivating and inspiring and like it really boosted me as i was nervous they had said something which actually got me inspired what did they tell was people like more than 70000 people had registered for this all india test and only 73 have made it so far and they like clapped and appreciated for the people that were present so at that time i felt really proud and i was like i got my confidence back and i was like ready for the interviews and after that what they told was like the, after first round they will tell like they, there will be an elimination and the further rounds they like they won't tell the elimination all they, it can have multiple rounds so they just told like first round will be there and after first round they are going to eliminate some people and then they will be sent back to the hotels and that was the process so what i thought at that point was i was thinking like i have to qualify this first round so i was not thinking i have to like i was not thinking like i want to get placed but what i was thinking was i have to 
get qualified this first round at least i want to give some tough fight even if i'm not selected i have to give my best for this round so this like i have been always consider ms dhoni as my role model or something like uh, i had like you might have seen in his speeches as well so he, in one of the speeches he tell like uh, when whenever he was in childhood or in college or and he was playing some match at day day he was never thinking like i will play for india what he was thinking was i have to win this match i have to win today's match so i had like similar thoughts i just wanted to crack that one interview and i like didn't think of like i have to get placed so that was my focus that i have to give my best and i was really motivated and boosted after the stats that they told like uh, out of more than 70000 people there were only 73 appearing for the interviews so that was the thing and first at the first round and the first question itself i was not able to solve i can say like i actually solved it but the interview was not looking interview was not looking very happy and he was i was thinking like he is not satisfied so i was a bit nervous about that but uh, one key point like i am going to tell you further as well like if whenever you are giving an interview and if you fail or if you are unable to answer some question you you don't have to ruin your full full interview right so i got nervous but i like again i remember that thing like i have to crack this first round itself and we'll see what happens next so the further questions i was hopefully able to solve it well i was able to write the code there were like really some hard problems asked and i was able to solve them so after that the first round was over and after first round uh, like everyone's first round got over and we got the result and fortunately i was one of them who was not eliminated so they sent around 50% people back to hotel and there were like 30 to 40 people less so at that time i again thought like now i'm one step closer and like the 50% of the competition is reduced and i have to give, just give best to my second round so it similarly happened for the further rounds i had three interviews particularly and after that the process was over and after those second and third interviews were amazing for me but i was like not 100% sure like or confident that i am going to get hired because competition was very tough and as i told there were people from like top colleges and even some had crock already top product companies so i was not sure like i had i, I just know that i had done my best but that was the thing then we were sent back to hotel and next day we had return journey and all so that was the thing after that uh, the results were not actually told on that day itself so they told the result around 2 weeks later so when i had arrived and i have went, went to shamli we were having our exam soon in the next week and i was like i was having like like kind of sleepless like when i am going to get result i was curious daily i was checking constantly for the mails i was like daily checking the mails i was making sure that i had made notifications on and i knew i had notifications on but still i was opening the gmail app and i was refreshing and i was checking so this was for initial week after that i was like i was getting really frustrated like when i'm going to get results so i want just results whether it be positive or not that was my state and we were having our exams and on one one day i was like uh, i i was a tea fan so me and my roommates we daily used to have tea two times a day like before going to the first lecture and in the evening so we might have missed breakfast but we will definitely have our tea so we were like tea fans so uh, one evening i had went so that was the day before exam we were having exam next day and we had went to uh, vishram bhat chowk to have tea and there i received a mail and i opened the mail i just read the first line it was like congratulation based on your performance we have decided to extend you off full time offer in 2020 i didn't actually believe that like i was amazed i actually gave one of my roommate and i i told him to ask like what is this shit and like am i really selected i was i was like so much surprised and happy then i called my parents and my faculties and the training and placement officer bhai gudhe sir and a lot of friends and all so most of the day then got wasted like i had some messages and calls so that was a day i like didn't get even time to prepare for exams somehow i next morning i prepared for one two hours and hopefully i got passed i didn't fail in third fourth year so that was the thing about the goldman sachs process so i'm going to tell like what resources i had used particularly for goldman sachs that these are the websites that i had used so it was geeks for geeks i was so there there are like tag there are tags and they have sorted company wise problems there were around 100 questions i had practiced them besides that i was practicing problems on interview beat and lead code 
and I had read so this one of the book cracking the coding interview is by Gail McDowell so I had already uh, read it in third year but during this time I actually started revising it and even the Karunanchi book so these are prop these two books are good for problem solving or particularly for an interview preparation these are not books like when you are starting they won't teach you the concept from scratch the theory concepts but once you are aware of the concept if you want to prepare for interview they are having amazing problems to solve so after that uh, besides that like uh, youtube i had saw playlist so rachid jain you might be knowing him is a famous youtuber and post videos so i had so he had cracked actually goldman sachs interview and he had also posted about his process and after that so as he had already cracked goldman sachs so i viewed a lot of his videos especially the dynamic programming playlist was great uh, and gaurav sen i followed for the system design playlist for preparation for the system design and all so these are some of the resources so let's get let's move forward So let's move to general interview tips. So these are tips like it can apply for like people are applying for Goldman Sachs as well. But even in general for any top product companies or even companies visiting our college for all companies this can apply. It's, it's like very generic interview tips. So first thing is your introduction. So your introduction is very important. So why why the first question is introduce yourself whenever you go into inter interview room. Why like interviewer is actually saying that hey hey candidate so take the ball it's in your court and you decide what you want to say so most of the times what happens is what you say into in the in your introduction like you might mention some projects or some of your achievements or your favorite subjects most of the time your interview might start from that point as well so you can you can directly give a hint to interviewer by focusing on some point like you want to drive your interview to that point so it might not be applicable in every case sometimes even introduction is not asked and direct problems are asked in some interviews but 90% of the interviews i can say introduction is asked and you can play like you have complete authority like you can pitch whatever you want and most of the times your interview will go through that point or that project or subject anything your resume i have written so your resume plays an important role as well it the, it is a naive thing like it's not need to be included but even as introduction even in resume also you should like focus on what thing so if you want to uh drag your interview towards problem solving data succession algorithm you should mention more of your profiles and more of your competitive programming achievements and problem solving like whatever activity you have done your hobbies and all you must focus towards that and if you want some like core subjects or projects you should accordingly prepare your resume obviously everything has to be put so uh, we, you cannot say like if you want to take interview towards the problem solving we cannot mention resume that's not the thing we have to mention everything but we have to focus like we can make things bold or we can write more things of problem solving so obviously your most of the time maybe interview might get diverted to that point besides this think out loud so this is particularly when you are solving coding problems so this is the process in like most of the product companies the interviewer will give you a problem so you will first read the problem and you will think like what is the solution then the all and after that you mostly tell your solution or directly start coding it so this should not be followed so what you should do is you should read the problem to the interviewer you should tell like what you have understood from the problem you should again tell what approaches you are thinking to solve this problem that might be multiple approaches you should always tell like which which approach you are using and make sure like if interviews interviewer is satisfied for an example if you are if a problem is having like you are knowing o of n square solution and interviewer is expecting o of n solution there's no point in coding the n square solution and again interviewer will tell no i want more optimized problem and again erasing that or again writing the another code for the o of n problem that's not the thing you just clarify like if the approach is right and when he gives a green signal then you should actually start writing the code and even while writing the code you should think out loud so like you should say i'm writing this function and i'm putting these two parameters each line you should like whatever you are thinking your thought process should be conveyed to the interview because in some of the cases you might not be able to solve problem 100% but your th the interviewer might get impressed by your thought process and how close you were to the solution so that's the thing and besides that they are hiring 
so you are appearing for the interview right so they are the companies obviously hiring so interviewers are there for help so this thing that i told think out loud like whenever you are interacting with the interviewer so get him involved so when he is involved it like two people are solving the problem and the interviewer might start giving you hints so that's the advantage that you get so like involve him and make make him feel that we are in a team and we are going to togetherly solve this problem and so that will be interactive so at the end what the check interviewer or interviewer checks is like if if this particular guy is hired if this he's he or she is working in our team if he's sitting beside me in my cubicle or at desk we are able to interact with him in day to day life and is he good problem solver so you can pitch it here itself so you can involve the interviewer while solving problem besides that ask questions so whenever your interview is completed every time or most of the times interview ask any questions from me so at that time you should never say no you should have like keep in mind some questions prior to interview that i have to ask these questions it might be related to some technical questions like what what technologies you are using what projects you are using or or anything on any non technical aspect as well so definitely you should ask questions even if interviewer doesn't ask you like do you have any questions for me you should point out that i have some questions for this company or this role and you should start asking the questions besides that like i have told like greedy approach what i mean here is like i told the example of mahindra singh dhoni like you have to focus like on cracking the one round and then think for the further rounds this applies in a singer interview as well so i as i said nervous for one question nervous throughout so if you failed one question you should not ruin your complete interview because you might get demotivated that i am not able to solve this questions and even if like further questions you know it prior you can solve it very well you get like destroyed and you are not able to solve it correctly so whenever if if even if you are unable to solve some problem never get nervous and maintain the momentum throughout the interview that's what i have said and dry run if there's time so what i mean by dry run is like mostly we write the code on paper and once the solution is completed you can yourself sometimes interviewer ask like uh, just let's dry run this or he might have some test cases and he will test like if this if this is going well or not and so he might uh, tell you to do the dry run so instead like if even if it's not asked and if you are timing you can yourself do so you can rectify the mistake if they are there are any okay so let's moving to next problem so you might have a lot of questions but we are having short of time i think already 40 minutes are over and so at the end we will be answering the questions so let's move towards the demystifying computer science so this particular thing is directed towards its the audience right will be for the second year students because like third year or fourth year so you might all already know what are the subjects and all so why computer science so this the answer for this question you should know or else you will not able to perform good so what what do i mean by this so if you are not knowing what why i am doing this thing how could you get like involved in them you you are not interested you are just you cannot for, for example competitive programming if you are not getting interest in that how could you force yourself to solve problems throughout nights and hours if that won't help even if you are solving you won't be learning at the end so what i'm going to do is maybe what might help so i'm having an answer for why computer science like why i choose or why i'm doing so maybe in the questions you can ask but right now we are in short of time so i'll quickly tell maybe what might help so i'm going quickly going to tell you what is computer science so let's use some practical example and what i'm going to do is let's suppose uh, uh, let's see that uh, we have to go to google.com say so we are having this phone right so what i'm going to do is just a second okay this is the right slide okay so what i'm going to do is like i'm going to give a real life example and i'm going to map these all these subjects like people always tell do fundamental subject but why we should do that if you are knowing this answer you will really enjoy doing these subjects so let's get started to that and just check like if people are there or yeah okay so i'm having my phone what i want to do is i want to visit google.com so first step i have picked my phone in my hand and we can see there is fingerprint lock or there is biometric 
there is face lock or there is a password so here we encounter the first domain itself that is security which is one of the very crucial domains in the field of computer science it is called as uh, cyber security sometimes or even computer networks and security it's together Nicole besides that we were having face lock and biometrics were involved so we can consider like there is a domain of human computer interaction involved here so now when, once I have unlocked my phone so we are having this Android phone now what is an Android Android is an operating system right so so first of all we have to go to google.com so for that we will need a browser and for browser we need an OS so we are having this OS so actually the hardware involved is doing all the processing like there will be processor there will be RAM and memory and all the stuff but you cannot put your Chrome browser directly on that you need some interface to interact with it so you so we need this operating system and there we go we have an Android operating system here and now we are going to open the Chrome browser so before opening that how did it get here in the first place so here comes the another domain or subject which is software engineering so software engineers in Google have developed this so they go through these phases like getting the requirements having SRS document designing developing testing and after that publishing the application then it got released then you it was available in the play store you downloaded it and finally you have this application available now I'm opening this application right so I'm opening a new tab and what I am doing is I'm writing google.com so it says no internet oh my god so do we know, need an internet to access google.com why we are having a phone we are having operating system we have application develop but google.com is hosted somewhere in the United States right and we are sitting somewhere here in India and we want to access that website which is actually hosted in United States so how will our request reach there so here comes another very important domain which our domain or subjects or fundamental subject computer networks so I'll I'll turn my data on and I'll actually visit the google.com now and I have the results so how does that happen so first of all like there is something called as DNS so you are you are typing google.com to but to reach the Google server we need something called as logical address which is IP address so this thing will be like done by the DNS so there are again lot of things we are not going in depth there will be local DNS there will be something called as hosts file if you are using through Windows and you will have the router and at your ISP level you will have again DNS so we are not going into that so so my phone is connected to my router which is in besides room so now I'm connected from so now I am able to communicate from my phone to router here even the authentication is involved so again you can see it's security part of authentication so for like router is having password so I, we have to like put in the password but I had already connected so it got connected so that was the thing so after it so now my request is went till router but we have to travel thousands of kilometers across and we have to reach US so how it will happen so from router your request will be sent to your ISP from wherever you are buying internet or even if you are using sim cards if you are using a geo sim card geo is your ISP so your request from your device through router will go to your ISP now your ISP might having connected with some national level ISP in India say BSNL so your request will be gone to at some national level so now from national level so we are in India and from here how it will go I hope you are like most of you might be knowing your request will be transferred thousands of miles across through the oceans so there are actually the fiber optic cables are there through the through the under oceans they are and your request so from national level ISP of India your request will go to the national level ISP of United States now Google is using say ISP AT&T the national level ISP of uh, US will redirect your request to the AT&T then from AT&T it will actually reach the routers maybe uh, we consider some Google is using some routers at the data centers and your uh, request is reached at the data center of Google in the router and again from router we will have some IP address so which actual host we want to go so where the application is developed it will go so obviously there are some more complicated themes like load balance and all involved scalability we are not going into deep details so that's the thing so now your request is reached at google.com and then they will send the response so you might think like this is a so huge process and how does like we are getting results in seconds now let's take an example so like we have already covered a lot of subjects you might have seen here there was cybersecurity was there networking was there operating system was there 
software development was there computer networks was there so uh, we are missing out two more important subjects that is data structures and algorithms and database management system so what i'm going to do is now i'm to going to search for apple iphone 11 so within seconds i'm getting the results right so how does that happen so apple can mean a lot of things right in the google database there might be a lot of things that apple food might be there a lot of things might be there so apple world itself will have a lot of things involved so there will be huge data for so for example i will tell you right i would like to do this experiment yourselves whenever you are having time what you guys can do is you can write a program to generate some say billions of records of numbers just write simple uh, c or java program to generate this file and write two programs write one uh, linear searching program and uh, binary search program and you can yourself see the difference so we can observe like if we are having some say 10 to 20 gb of file it around take minutes for whole things to be searched through the linear search program which has a complexity of o of n now imagine like in today's world we are having a pen drives of 1 tb so this much size is there and we are having flash drives or usb or pen drive whatever they call as 1 tb so you can imagine if 1 tb of data is there in a file how much time it would take to search your data suppose you want to search your roll number or something how much time it would take now imagine google is not having 1 tb of data right can you imagine like how much is the size of google data center so google data center is compared with the size of football fields so it is said that google data centers are around seven to eight football fields now you can imagine this small thing can hold one tb of data seven eight football fields are might be holding so many of data so if you are searching for apple iphone 11 in that data like for this huge data of like i don't know like the terabytes and whatever the units might get changed by the time you are searching for iphone 11 and you get results iphone 12 will be available in the store next to you so yeah it's like it's being like quite over exaggerated but that's the real case so we're having a lot of data that's why we need efficient algorithms and data structures so google have designed such beautiful data structures and algorithm because of which we are going getting results and that was the data structures and algorithm part and for the database like obviously i i told the example of file system so google is not storing their data in the file system they are using databases they are uh, doing some indexing on upon them they are using caching and a lot of techniques so that was the that was the thing so i hope you have got some overview the first like students who have just completed the first year like why these subjects are so important and uh, after that you know what like what is computer science and now you can find why for yourself so overall you can like you have to develop interest you have to have love for these subjects or whatever technology you are learning and overall you can say you can you have to be passionate or else you cannot force something so you can you can also try this thing the silicon valley tv series like that inspired me a lot through for the technology and all so let's get start let's move forward so importance of core subjects in interviews so now you know we have to study the core subjects but why do they ask these subjects in interviews so data structures and algorithms obviously you are going to develop some applications and any company that is going to hire you want their algorithms to be efficient similarly like google is building some efficient algorithms any company it applies for all companies so that's why data structures and algorithms is important database management system so again it's the same thing like if you are developing any applications you are not going to store the entire data in some file system that was like outdated like many years ago people used to use file system for softwares but after that databases came into picture there are different types of databases sql mysql and all you'll learn all these things in your courses right so database systems operating systems also they are so in operating system so most of the real life applications need multi-threading and multi-processing and all this stuff like so if you are not knowing operating systems and concept through this you cannot implement multi-threading in java you might able able to write the code but what is actually happening in the background you might not get that so that won't be helpful so that's why they ask operating system object oriented program is obviously needed so whenever you develop an application there is like most the popular architecture is mvc that they follow so there is something called as model and what we actually do is any entity we map it with real life and we write a class for that so here comes the object oriented programming and why it's needed computer networks as i told so 
the applications like suppose we do projects in our college right and we just host it on our laptop but the real life applications have to be scalable there will not be one or two users there will be thousands and millions of users so for to give an example uh, google receives around about 40000 request per second so imagine if one pc can handle this 40000 request so there has to be scalability right and this application any application will be deployed or you can say hosted on a lot of servers or host or computers so you can imagine like there are thousands of computers involved for uh, developing or deploying such a huge application and how they will communicate between themselves so here comes like computer networks i have also told one of the real life example and in deployment also computer networks is must besides that software engineering as i told there are phases involved like designing developing testing and going to production that is releasing so a lot of things are involved and system design so as i told like the uh, we are using lots of suppose we are using 100 servers so how who will decide like where your request will go there so here comes system design so obviously there are a lot of other uh, use cases of system design as well but i am giving an example of something called as load balancer so whenever your request goes to any web server maybe google or maybe other website so it will go to the load balancer and load balancer is nothing but an another server which will decide from this which uh, which server we have to use so this so suppose there are a b c three servers a is having already serving some 50 50 to 100 request b is serving some 50 to 100 but c is having serving some less request so it does something called as health checks and all and based on that it decides so due to which we get like reliable and robust applications so that was the thing and we are like almost it's 56 minutes completed and now further like i had re received some questions so i'll be quickly completing my presentation so it's taking a lot of time and we are short on time so what i did was like there were some questions and i already prepared some slides and which will answer questions in general we will obviously go are going to have some live questions as well at the end but for the slides are like based on the question uh, okay so this is like one of the most controversial topic uh, competitive programming versus development so what i'm what we are going to do is like i'm going to we are going to solve some problem and for the people who are like of first year or second year you might not be knowing dynamic programming so you might have heard what is dynamic programming and most of the people even in second and third year even today like they have fear of this subject so uh, i'm going to tell you like the difference and how balanced there should be between competitive programming and development and along with this you are going to learn one sub part of dynamic programming as well so let's solve a simple problem first okay so the question is find two numbers x and y from 1 to 10 which will give the maximum product so you have to choose any two numbers between 1 to 10 and we ha we have to have like the product should be maximum suppose like 7 into 8 it is 56 which is less than 9 into 9 so 9 into 9 is the answer but we are having a constraint here that we are having constraint that x plus y should be less than or equal to 10 so for example if you are using uh, 9 the another number you cannot use 9 so the sum should be less than or equal to 10 so uh, this particular example it might get a little complicated further but you can always was rewatch the video again when it's ended right so this is one of the constraint or we can say condition you can so if you are not aware of the word constraint it's the condition so i hope you got the problem we have to find any two numbers which which will get multiplied and we have to have maximum answer and the constraint is we should have the sum that should be less than 10 or equal to 10 and another constraint is x and y can be duplicates so 2 into 2 is allowed so 2 into 2 answer is 4 which is allowed i hope the question is clear and will move so simple observation we get here correct answer will always have x plus y value equal to 10 why because so say you are using first number as uh, x is 1 so you will always choose y as 9 right why would you cho choose 8 so the correct answer will always have x plus y equal to 10 i hope you got this so so now we are doing some calculations so we are doing 10 into 0 which results to 0 9 into 1 which gives 9 8 into 2 is 16 7 into 3 is 21 6 into 4 is 24 5 into 5 is 25 so so far we have visited half of the numbers and we will again visit these numbers 
5 into 5 is 25, 4 into 6 is 24, 22 7 is 21, and so on. So again, the answer is 0. But uh, some of you might have observed, like we had already calculated these for these values. So we are already having the answer for 7 into 3. But here, again, when so we are uh, assuming x, like whenever we write a program, we write a loop. So like a loop is like for i is equal to 0 to some n value. So here also we will, anyone would write a loop like from 10 or you may start from 0 to n and you will find, you will assign y value to uh, 10 minus x and so on. But why we should calculate these values again and again? So consider like we are having, as I told, like we are having answer for 8 into 2, 7 into 3, 5 into 5. We already know 5 into 5 is giving maximum answer. Why are we again calculating 5 into 5? So this is one step closer like to, towards developing efficient algorithm. So what we can do is instead we can store s somewhere this value of 5 into 5. And if we are encountering this multiplication again, the in the right column, we can we are already having answer and we will not perform this operation. Now uh, you people might think like multiplication, so how it takes some milliseconds or something, but consider some very huge operation is there and every time you are performing some lot of com uh, computations. Consider like for finding some this answer for maximum value, you need to run through some loops and all. So because of that, we are not calculating the same values again. So what I'm trying to do is like by telling this uh, concept like computer programming versus development, I'm uh, making you learn a simple concept of dynamic programming that is overlapping sub problem. So uh, let's not worry what is that and all. And I'm just going to, I just wanted to make it look simple. So people always fear of what dynamic pro programming is. So dynamic programming consists of two parts. One is overlapping sub problem and another part is optimal sub structure. So any problem that you will be solving, if, is, if it is satisfying these two properties, that is overlapping sub problems are there and optimal sub structure is there, then we can solve it to dynamic programming. So don't get feared by these words, like what is overlapping sub problem? It's simply phi into phi, we have already calculated and we are again calculating phi into phi. So it is an overlapping sub problem and we store it somewhere. So let's get back to the point. Uh, hope you have learned something here and my point here is you will get get that like it it will get revealed in the next slide so we have the answer like 5 into 5 is giving maximum answer that is 25 so here i am mapping it with now competitive programming versus development consider x is problem solving so problem solving is one of the important thing that is required in interviews so for problem solving competitive programming will help so while you participate in long challenges or even do practice problem on geeks for geeks or hacker or, or any website you will develop problem solving skills that will be helpful here and why is project so you have to do projects so for projects development will help so i i hope this is pretty straightforward and i want to tell a statement that make sure your answer is greater than 20. so whatever you choose so this i hope like you are getting some idea or like it's yet it had gotten some somewhat complicated so you can always rewatch again when this is over but i want to make a statement here like you should have at least 30 percent focus towards one of the thing so suppose you are you are liking competitive programming a lot do it 70 percent but not more than that you should have some good projects at the end right you should have some good projects in your resume you should have no knowledge of real world applications as well so that's why that's the thing and even if you're uh, folk inclined towards the development you should like again do at least 30 percent of cp or problem solving that will at least uh, help you to crack the rounds so the another statement here is offer is equal to coding round plus interviews so for any job offer you like the process is obviously first there is coding round and there will be interviews so coding round will require competitive programming and problem solving only then you will be able to get the interview so at so I'm assuming here like at least 30% of your time should be in competitive programming. Even if you're very core developer, you should spend at least this time. So you at least get through the rounds and you get to show your so-called development skills. So that's the thing. And if you're like a problem solver person, so you if you're easily cracking the coding rounds, but if you're not having good projects in the interviews, you might fail there. So sometimes even the interviews go on problem solving only, but that's not the uh, case every time you might get asked your projects as well. So that's the thing, you should have balance. So 
the short answer will be competitive programming versus development it's not a fight it's not a battle you have to keep balance or you're defeated here so besides the offer it was like for getting offer and even in industries like whenever you are developing some application or software you need to develop application right you have to use some framework suppose we are using some java as a backend and using spring boot as a framework so we need to have development skill to develop that application and in that application there will be some processing involved like there will be some services like i gave example of google so whenever you hit google search you will see that your url it changed to google.com slash search so slash search is something called as endpoint or api that you will like get to know this in third year and all so so you have to develop those apis or you have to write these services and those ha have to be efficient so that's why you need i have written performant so data structures algorithms problem solving and development all is needed for like for getting an offer as well and even if you are placed after that through through the industry it is needed so i have also written that x is must in second year so why i have written this statement is most of the colleges have this fundamental subjects in third year so uh, we are having os dbms data section algorithm in second year but some of the colleges are having in third year so uh, there are like internship after second year so like most of the companies for second year internship like after your second year is completed your interview will be on data structures and algorithm and problem solving only why because most of the candidates have not studied that subjects and they need some generic criteria to just all the candidates who have studied fundamental subjects as well and who have not studied fundamental subjects as well so most of their interviews are problem solving and coding so that is why you should do competitive programming most in second year and in third year you should get inclined towards developing projects and development that's it there are some exceptions as i told like uh, you might say that i have not i have seen someone story he has not having very great great projects but he was very good competitive programmer he cracked some initial rounds and all his interviews were based on say problem solving and system design so he was able to ace the interviews but that was one of the case right it's not all the cases so what if you are asked project so this 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 thing can be considered as exception and here comes the part of luck so people always say that like uh, suppose there are five subjects and one candidate prepared for four subjects and he was not knowing any anything about uh, one subjects and he was like asked questions on the four subjects as well only four subjects and that's what he he was hired another similar candidate is there who has studied just one subject or two subjects and he has neglected three four subjects and most of his interviews were one or two subjects and that's why he got hired so people always discuss like there is luck in placement and all yeah there is like there will be some part of luck but you can control it so how to increase your luck it's simple you have to be good in everything or at least do at some level as i told like 30 30% of projects or 30% of problem solving if you are doing that will help i think so if you are not neglecting stuff and you are not skipping some stuff you will be lucky that's the thing I, i wanted to make point here so that was about competitive programming versus development and now comes the part of placement preparations so most of the part we have already covered but uh, it's it's like reiteration of what we have uh, heard prior so problem solving is required for placement preparations obviously you will have initial coding rounds for that problem solving is required and even for top product companies and big giants they will have problem solving as initial rounds and even a one or two problems might be asked in further rounds as well core cs subjects so as i told the importance what and why i hope you are aware now why core subjects are required and your interview will be on core subjects so besides problem solving this is another important thing third thing is projects you have to do good projects your interview might start from project as well so you might be a very good problem solver and you might have some great knowledge on subjects as well but if you are not done some good projects you might be in trouble so that's the thing your projects and interpersonal skill suppose there is a ca candidate and he's he has he has a very good coder he has done great pro problem solving he has studied fundamental subject very well and he has done a lot of great projects he's perfect te te technically he's perfect we can call but he is not having interpersonal skills whatever he has done whatever technical knowledge he has gained through his years three or four years if he is not able to convey it properly to the interviewer 
he is helpless right he will he won't be hired mostly because like you are solving some problem you are not able to convey it how it's getting solved and all then you might be in problem so interpersonal skill in words like leadership communication a lot of stuff is there so i hope you understand this then these i have highlighted these four parts as bold because these are must so these are must so this should be done and if neglecting any of this can you can be in problem so besides that uh, i have written some of your additional skills you might have learned some frameworks you have done some a uh, task and all so whatever skills you have learned through courses and all you can mention that and your resume or introduction might have that and in interview you can go on that skill as well your achievements so achievements in programming contest or hackathons anything or even participations whatever stuff interview you can sometimes even go on that besides this extra and co curricular activities so besides technical round there is hr round in hr round like there has to be some co curricular activities or extra curricular activities that you have done so here mostly i was telling about access or events i organized or other participation as well so that was the placement preps so let's move forward so i am going a little bit quick like because already 1 hour and 10 minutes are completed and we are short in time so we'll just go through all these slides these these slides are based on questions so you can assume that i have already started some of the questions so after that also they there are some google form questions that will be answering and then we'll move to the live question so suggested plan for a second year so this was one of like the questions or most of the students ask the questions like how should i plan my second year so students who have just completed their first year how what what should i do throughout my second year so these are some guidelines i can tell you so competitive programming so if you have already if you are not already started or even if you are not started c program like like as i told i started it after three semesters were completed so you have just completed two semesters even if some of you has not started you are still good to go it's never too late to start so you can start so initially you should like learn the programming languages and then you will do do some practice problems on hackerang and other websites like gfg and all and then start participating in the long challenges of course so i was like participating a year or two ago i don't know uh, what's the status now like people are going more towards code forces like i have not like recently participated in any long challenges so i was just telling based on my experience so you should start like code chef long challenges even if you are able to solve one or two problems at the start it's like good and code chef like long challenges you can always take help from friends it's not like like uh, i have discussed with frames and all as long as you are learning nothing is wrong so that's the point here you should start competitive programming in second year after that algorithms and data structures so for competitive programming you need some algorithms and data structures but obviously like if you are going to solve some basic problems on strings and array you would need the knowledge of linked list or stack or graphs or some data structures like that so don't wait for like your preparation of data structure is completed and then you'll start participating in the long challenges and uh, any contest so in contest like contest as well they are balanced so there will be again problems on like there will be simple problems as well on based on strings and array and at the end there will be some graph problems dp problems as well so it's not important like uh, for getting started you no, don't need to learn all algorithms you will study from array till graph and then you will get started that's not the thing you can start learning uh, now as well and uh, side by side you can do competitive programming and i have suggested one thing like youtube my code school is there and plus hackerang that is inline program so this is one of the channel my code school that's for like for beginners it's good after that object oriented programming you had to start from any language like choose c++ java or python any language but stick to one language and uh, do like object oriented programming depth in that all the concepts that are involved so like some students in our college prefer the uh, playlist of durga soft so they are having a lot of videos around there are around 200 videos and each video is around, is around of 1 hour so you should better start now so like if you are starting one month before placements in your third year that won't help you have to do some faqs and you have to work around things which is not good but it's the last option but it's not at good so you, in second year you are then you should start object oriented programming study properly database concepts database concept i mean like you should uh, start learning the concept as well and i have mentioned here connect and use so i'll clarify that in crud thing i have written here at the base 
and SQL practice. So simultaneously, uh, you are learning database. You should also learn this structured query language and solve problems on SQL queries. So there are problems on Hackerang as well, and there is another website called SQL Zoo. You can use as that as well. Besides that operating system, I have suggested a resource for that. That is Galvin Book, and then there is networking basics that. If you are good at reading, like if you feel comfortable reading books, you can use this Corrosion book or you can uh, read through GFG or some playlist. But at start, you have to give some time for learning networking. And for networking particular, if you are not relating networking with the real life, as I told, like whenever you are studying, like always imagine all these layers. So they, they, there will be some layers and there will be some OSI models and all. So whenever you are studying uh, this computer networks, always map like your require like your packets are transferring from phone to router as a told example always re relate that or else it will be just theory and you will be bored so if you are not relating networking then you won't enjoy it and you won't learn it as well so after a time you need to buy heart again you might need to revise again and if some uh, challenging question is asked in interview or some design question is asked or some innovative question is asked you might not be able to answer that so understand it rather than by hearting it. So contest in all other colleges, this thing you can do like CIP host, Mindspark, PSCT host are a lot of competitions as well. And some local colleges are RIT, Government College, Karad, KIT is there and WC obviously. So this is the thing. And besides this, I suggest you to do a CRUD project. So what is CRUD is create, read, update and delete. So what you should do is you should do a simple project in the second year itself. It doesn't need to be very fancy. It doesn't need to use some latest technologies. You can just use basic Java and servlet and you have to use something called a JDBC connectivity. You will get to know it. like in the database point I have written. So connect slash use. So you try to learn like how to connect database and develop a simple CRUD project. Don't worry if even if it's library management system, you're you are doing this for learning, not for mentioning on the resume or something. You are uh, so that you get taste of development so overall you should mostly do competitive programming throughout the second year but to get a taste of development you should do a CRUD project so while you are using some real technologies like Django some Spring Boot and all these technologies and framework in your third year you will already have knowledge of what is front end what is back end how it connects where is the database coming how the application is hosted where the request is going the MVC architecture all these things you will be already aware so that will be helpful and CCD is at foundation. So this was like, I had kept a threshold for my, myself. Like once I am able to crack this CCD is foundation examination, I would stop doing the lo long challenges and I would be focusing more on problem solving from uh, websites like interview beat and geeks for geeks. So this is a difference between competitive programming and problem solving. So competitive programming will involve participating in challenges like code share, code forces and all. And problem solving is like your just doing it for interview practice that is lead code is there geeks for geeks is there interview bit is there so that's the difference so i had kept my threshold like uh, if i'm going to crack this foundation exam of this app i will stop the long challenges and i will focus on more interview focused problems so that was the thing and i would suggest it's not so again here some of the things are mentioned in bold and these are must for you so uh, highly recommended for you to be complete this in second year and there are some things like from contest and CRUD and CCD set that's optional but I would highly recommend that as well so let's move forward third year so plan of suggested plan for third year so third year students who might not have followed the plan or you might be looking like my second year was not like this and I have not done the, like that like all the CRUD project the CCD SAP exam and all these subjects, I have not even done the subjects. What will, what will be I do, doing now? So no need to worry. Like I have, like I have this. I'm suggesting a plan. What I'm assuming is like you, if you are even not done that in the second year. So this previous plan for for the batch of 2023 for 2022, you can follow this plan directly. No need to worry that you have not done some things in second year. So that's the thing. Like start early and make significant project in fifth semester. So in so we do two major projects in fifth semester and sixth semester of the of the third year of our BTEC course. So what happens is in sixth semester you get a lot less time because you have to revise all the subjects because as soon as sixth semester is over, companies will be coming for placements. So you have a lot less time 
and uh, in fifth semester you have a lot of time so se when second year is completed you have vacations and all and a lot of time is there and you should start early and you should make some really good and significant project so you can like keep in mind that you not you will not be getting much time in sixth semester and do a great project fifth semester as well. so this should be our target besides that be in touch with problem solving so as i am recommending that you should do a lot of competitive programming in second year but third year you should be inclined towards development and making projects and all but you should never lose the touch with problem solving so even if you are not participating in long challenges or contests in local colleges or events you should always be in touch with uh, problem solving as i said like i stopped long challenges and i started this lead code gfg and interview bit so similarly you you should do this so it's not even need to be done daily you can like do two three days a problem so you have to just be in touch everyone will have different pace and different frequency you can find it for yourself then start learning cs fundamentals if not learn properly in second year so if you are not learn cs fundamentals in second year you can start learning now in the like you have completed your second year now right so start learning from the third year itself like because you are not done it properly and at the placement time you just have a month like in july placement usually starts and till may your exams you just have one month june and in june you cannot from scratch start all the subjects and learn that you have to do your resume and a lot of th things so th this time should ideally be for revision and so that's the thing like at the start of third year we start learning this subject revise cs fundamental before college campus that this should be generally done in june and apply for summer internship so our college is like mostly placement heavy so companies directly come for full time offer there are internships as well but that there are six semester internship for in the fourth year but there are summer internships as well and through af campus you can apply for summer internships so most of the college like cup and all or iits like they will have more than 50% of placement through the summer internships so most of the people get summer internships and their internships get converted so this is like easier option you can say because summer internship you have just completed second year you will be just mostly asked problem solving it's fine if you are not having some great projects and most of the interviews will be on problem solving but for full time offers there will be a lot of interview there will be subjects there will be projects and lot of things will be picture besides that most of the summer internship companies some companies take interview even after internship completion but most of the companies what they do is they give internship based on the performance so instead of just one or two hours of interviews you have two months to prove for yourself like you are you are deserving for this offer so you have if you get a internship it's very good like you get lot of time to prove yourself you have two months not uh, 50 or 40 minutes of interview so that's the thing so these are these are things are again hi i have highlighted in bold besides that participate in hackathons try boosting cpi so people like me might have uh, cpi very low in first year or even second year if you have scored low third year is the chance you can always improve your cgpa and try boosting cpi as by the end of the third year besides that uh, uh so these these are the suggestions so like if you are a competitive programming person and if you are already done with these bold highlighted things what i can suggest you is you can learn advanced data structures so like the concept like tries the advanced data structure like red black trees and all we are already having a course like advanced data structure you can opt for that and besides that you can try for ccd cap advanced examination ccd cap is like codesep certified data structure algorithms program the same exam that i mentioned foundation like it has three different level one is foundation second is advanced and another is expert so you can try for advanced exam in second uh, in third year so if you are done with this first bold highlighted things and if you are development kind of person not very cp heavy person then you can explore more technologies like cloud like aws you can learn system design and stuff like that and you can implement this full stuff in your projects so that's the suggested plan we can say so after that these are some add ons again these are based on some of the questions so networking is very important so whenever you are networking with people maybe people from your batch or senior or junior anyone uh, some at some point they might get in industry but they will be your friend for a long time they will be um, as a mentor for you and you might obviously get a reference one example i would like to give you like uh, our senior batch batch of 
so five five students got placed in media.net that is direct that and five out of five went through referrals of the seniors of batch 2018 so that's the thing so you can imagine like how important networking is like besides having technical knowledge and all if you're not going you're going to get interview what's the use of that knowledge so you should always do networking and even if you're not getting referrals you you will always have a mentor and as a friend so you'll have more people to interact and again you'll be socially active as well second point is use instagram but also use linkedin as well so a lot of companies are there posting jobs on linkedin and linkedin has like grown really well now and uh, at the end like i will suggest some pages four five pages are there so these pages actively post internships and job for freshers and if you are like even like for 10 or 15 minutes scrolling through linkedin in a day you will get to know the current job offers and the current market besides just job offer you might get other knowledge as well so what actually happening in the industry who is getting merged with what company what startups are coming into existence what technologies are trending a lot of things you get to get from linkedin people also post blogs and all their interview experiences are as well there besides that be active in college club it's not waste of time so some people might think like uh, joining a club is a lot of waste of time and even i can say it for myself like the time that i have spent in studying or coding i have been involved more time in college activities so i had a lot of work to do for college clubs as well but people think that it is a waste of time but the skills the leadership skills the management skills and whatever the social interaction communication you do club services whatever things you do you get credit develop club service is very important thing one of the very important thing so uh, you might think like only club service directors will be taking the club service you should take any initiative study any concept and try to deliver a club service how this will help is this will help you in the interviews it's similar right you are knowing some concept interviewer is going to ask you some questions and you will be answering that similarly let's say interviewer are like candidates juniors you will help them as well and you are developing your skills technical as well and you are able to convey what you are you are learning technically that was the thing so be active in college clubs do course cs labs properly so people always neglect labs but we find it boring and during exams only we study go through all the assignments people even copy paste the assignments but like even i have done it sometimes but that's not a good like when like when i was working in internship i came to know like some of one of my task was directly it was based on computer networking we had a, a task in our computer networks lab same task was there so exact same task was there so if i had done my lab properly i was i would have been more much more productive on my day to day task in the company so you can imagine that so the labs are very important then lectures so we always like feel like not attending lectures and bunking is cool and all and pe people always think that but so doing lectures is a very win win situation i can tell so first of all you get the knowledge through the lecture you get the teachers context so teachers context is very important so there are some brilliant students they don't do much lectures and they would read through books and they give exams with the people who are doing some lectures and they might not read some very great books but they are attentive in the lectures and they know the teachers context so suppose there is one concept and teacher so that concept might have some multiple perspectives right so if you are knowing so the student attending lecture will know the teacher's perspective and the student who is knowing the book he might be correct he will be correct but he will be having some different perspective which not might fit in the actual exams so that student even like might end in getting less marks so you get knowledge you get teachers context which results in getting greater cpi you get to hang out with friends so uh, people like are not like uh, we can say they don't like to attend lectures but now as we have passed out we miss most thing that we miss is the lectures like sitting with the friends together and attending lectures that's the one of the top thing that we are missing at ratna so you get to sit as friends and attend lecture as well and besides that's one of the most important thing is you, you don't need to struggle for 75% attendance that is automatically handled and besides that's comfortable exams so people like as i told like if you are not attending in lectures or not doing lectures and if you are just going uh, studying through last your last day before exam will be 
lot less stressful and you probably ha have to have a sleepless night you have to study all night you have to maybe you have to wake up very early and that will be a lot of stress will be there but if you are like attending lectures you'll be con comfortable and you have to like kind of just revise so this is the kind of win-win situation so anyways you have to maintain attendance and all so i would like to recommend that besides that getting inspired instead of getting complex so uh, you might feel like uh, for the same batch or any batch you can consider there will be students from your batch which will be doing very well say competitive programming is there and there will be there is some the kind of peer pressure during the long challenges like you see the leaderboards and you think that you are not performing very well and your friends or your batchmates are doing very well so instead of getting complex or getting jealous of them what you should do is you should get inspired of your batchmates so some pipe might feel oh, he is my batchmate i should be getting inspired from seniors only or some uh, industry people or some ceos are well. no that's not the thing you can like even i have get in, got inspired from juniors as well so getting inspired from your batchmates is a very good thing so instead of getting jealous or getting complex from your batchmates be happy from them and talk with them and get to learn talk with them how you can improve yourself seniors are obviously there but your batchmates will always be there with you in the same class so that's the thing and it's it's a good thing right you're even if you're even during placements if you're one of the friend is getting some uh, placed in some great companies you will have some guy who will refer you at some point so let's uh, that's the thing like just try to be happy and getting inspired from them instead of just getting complex or getting jealous of them so that's the thing then either organize or participate during college fest so uh, as i mentioned be active in club so by, by that i mean i doesn't it doesn't mean that if you're not a part of a, any club you will not succeed in life that's not the thing at all i've seen like people who have not been in club for any of the year have done wonders in their life but either organize so be a part of a club and try to organize the events or at least participate so if you are not wasting time so if you are thinking that it's a waste of time and if you are not joining a club and if you are not so you will not be organizing events so at least go and participate in that and after that one last statement i would like to make is participation plus learning is equal to win so whenever you get to get participated in any event even if you do not win it say a hackathon or any competition or even a simple contest the participation experience and learning can be considered as equal as winning so winning is definitely something different you get a kind of achievement but you also get to learn after participating so you should not never think like i am a very beginner for even competitive programming contest coding contest development contest or any anything in your life wherever there is participant required for and like for workshops also as i told like i went to workshop in first year itself i was not knowing java i was knowing like something is required to learn app development java is required and a lot of things other are required but that's not the thing like you should you should always like participate and at the end the learnings will be like kind of equivalent with winning so that was some add-ons and finally we have done with this session and i'll answer some of your questions so before starting the live chat what i'll do is uh, so access had sent some forms and there are already some questions there i'll first quickly answer those questions and then we'll start with the live chat and the live questions mm, okay so first question is do you have any youtube channel by which we can study ds algos which are really important for interviews so yes so there are a lot of youtube channels i would recommend for beginners my code school is there and so while you are learning data solution algorithm for the first time you can use that channel my code school and side by side you can solve the problems on hacker rank so there is different section on hacker rank so there is something called as problem solving and there is something called as data structures so in data structures there are problems on basic data structures so it starts from arrays and linkages and all is there so simultaneously you can watch the videos with that channel my code school and start this besides that you can read books so book is like we were reading for ozone i didn't really rely much on books i was watching playlist on youtube besides my code school once you have basic understanding of uh, data structures algorithm you can go through playlist for like abdul bari is there one of the instructor is there he's having some good tutorial for all these concepts 
decides that Tushar Roy is there. So uh, what I will do is uh, at the end, after some time the session is over, I'll add a slide here, which will have some resources. So you can, these slides will be publicly available and you can anytime come and have a look at the resources. So I hope that answers your question. Next question is, can there is scope for security like Android iOS or any type of development? And is it sufficient programming practice we do in four years of engineering for learning new things like security, machine learning, or any other thing? Okay, so you are like talking about, I imagine like you are talking about domain and in particular you are talking about security. So let's start like, even if it's, it, this applies for every domain, like even if be security or machine learning. So if you are planning to go to some top product company, they won't directly hire a fresher for a cybersecurity role. What they prefer is some experienced candidate with the cybersecurity role. Suppose, like, let's take example of cybersecurity only. So now you would, you would like think like I have to have security role, but I have to also get to that product company. So what you have to do is like uh, at start you have to do some internship from small companies or less known company. Get any internship that you have and enter the industry with that role don't care for which company you are joining if you are like truly passionate and interest like in this field at the start of the career don't worry if you are in some great company and all there is life pending for that so you are interested in role right so you can do internships even in local uh, any local internships you can do and after doing internships if even if you are not getting internships you can apply for like fresher fresher jobs will be there for this particular domain but they won't be very uh, top product companies you might need to work in startup and all where you will learn the actual things you'll gain some experience you'll have some great learning curve there and after you have some experience you can again try for this domain in particular so you can see like for freshers any company say amazon is there they there the role will be software development engineer so st1 will be there or anything like any other company is there so for fresher the role is generic and it is software engineer and they test problem solving and all so once and there are openings for lateral hires or which which is called as experienced hire and they have some specific roles like you might see some openings like java developer is there cyber security engineer will be there then so once you try to get into industry somehow try to work in any companies like if you're truly passionate for one uh, domain go for that you can uh, try working in small company for a couple of years and then you can always go like uh, after having required experience you can go to that and you have like asked like and is it sufficient competitive programming practice we do in four years to learn things like security so competitive programming is like completely different from this domain for this domain you have to completely have like different learning path. So for security, I will like, if you're asking for security, I will tell there is a certification called Certified Ethical Hacker. It is certification by EC Council, it's based in US. And besides this, there is another certification that is OSCP. So Offensive Security, that is another society and they have another certification for that. So this kind of certification will land you job in some kind of startup from small, small companies and you will get some experience and then you can go for these product companies. So I hope that answers your questions. There are a lot of questions I'll try to do. Is referral from employee at company must? Please answer these questions. Uh, no. So referral, uh, uh, referral is not must. So referral is always helpful, but it is not must. So see how. Uh, we'll take an example. Suppose there is a company XYZ and they are having some opening for say software engineer role. So they are having five openings, okay? And they post their opening on their website so people across the world will apply or region apply for that role so there will be thousands of people so companies also have something called as internal portal from which you get referred so generally this is a theme like i am assuming that companies will give preference to the people who are being referred so firstly you will be screened so suppose there are thousands of candidates who have totally applied from career space and there are some 50 60 candidates who are applied through referral so I think most of the times the probab uh, the priority will be given to the people through referrals and after that if there are still positions then they might come if this is not for any particular company i am assuming this like they are doing so referral is not must so you can directly even apply from a career space of any company and you can 
get the interview so they will have some screening process and that depends upon the availability and all but that's the thing i hope that answers your question that referrals are not mandatory and that's the thing what technologies we can consider for doing third year projects like machine learning blockchain is it better to stick with single technology till final year or to have knowledge of multiple technologies is more recommended so depends on you there is no specific answer so you are asking that if you should uh, follow same technology say machine learning throughout your four years or whatever years you are doing projects or you can switch that depends upon you suppose in third year you are exploring some domain say you do fifth in fifth semester you are doing some projects on machine learning if you find that interesting and you are passionate about it and obviously you have to take concerns of your project partners as well there has to be consensus and when three of you like agree you have to take the interest as well so choosing project partners is very important like they are going to be together with you for the rest of the two years and uh, you will be doing four projects in total so or maybe three projects if you are doing some me mega project in fourth year so you sh all should have consensus and also depending i'm again assuming that you are agreed with all and you are doing some machine learning projects in fifth semester so after you have done one project and uh, fifth semester is completed you might ge get some judgment about machine learning whether you are fascinated about it or you think it's not you are not interested in it then in sixth semester or in any semester you can change if you think that's like this is really passionate something i feel about then you can continue again so that depends it's not mandatory and as i told these domains and all technologies are doesn't matter so mostly ca companies will have some some similar or same they should have some common criteria right to compare two candidates so you are doing suppose you are a candidate a and you are doing projects on machine learning and some another candidate is b so he is doing some projects on cloud computing or security how these two can be judged so these are all the secondary things like whatever domains you are exploring or additional skills you are getting most of the things will be for interview specific it will be on as i told the computer programming data structure algorithm the fundamental subjects and the projects so that will be thing so it depends on you you it depends on your interest if it's fascinating you can continue or you can always shift the domain it's not like you have to do it forever one only that's the thing each semester cgpa versus overall cgpa during selection process your point on view on programming skill versus academic pointer please share your thoughts so each semester cgpa versus overall cgpa uh, so in this so companies usually never look so individual cgpa of any semester at the so companies will have some criteria some companies are having some are not having some say suppose college companies generally have criteria of 6.75 and some companies even have higher criteria 8 or even some have 9 but most of like recently companies are not having criteria so academic importance of academic pointer i can tell is it can be used for tie breaking or it can be used as a part of initial initial filtering process at the first round before getting the interviews like these are the students the students which pointers grade greater than seven will be allowed for interviews rest will be not so it can be used as filtration criteria and hopefully this is not used for like most of the top product companies and they don't care most about your pointers they just like they obviously respect that and it's used for tie breaking and all but many companies don't do it like uh, they are interested in problem solving they want good problem solver and, and a developer for example cisco is one of the companies so cisco is having like strict pointer criteria of 8.5 so uh, anytime you can visit the website of cisco go to the career space and they have pointer criteria of 8.5 so that is the thing so not all companies have this and i hope that answers your and your point of view on programming skills versus academic pointer so between two obviously programming skill is more important so even if you are having nine or ten pointer and if you are not able to crack the rounds or you are not able to solve the coding problems in the interviews will you will not be hired on the other hand if you are having some uh, less pointers a six or seven eight something and if you are a, re a really good problem solver and you are really giving all answers well in the interview you are solving then you will be hired so academic pointer is less important than problem solving if you ask to compare them so that then like academic pointer what it it involves so most of the second year and third in third year will involve the fundamental subjects right so if you are going to get say like eight plus pointer in that subjects you have to anyways have to sub uh, study the subjects as well so academic pointer is kind of related with that and you will be preparing for the interview as well and eventually you will get good pointer as well 
so it's in line kind of would you mind explaining the key factors of interview of big hiring companies uh, i think I, i have already answered this uh, in one of this slide so what is required again the same thing problem solving and all in big hiring companies yeah big hiring companies generally like most they are focused on problem solving only in which domain can we build cheap but presentable projects for example ml has lot of already built projects so we can give them uh so you are saying like cheap so by cheap i am expecting like you are uh, i am ex- i'm understanding it like you want some things kind of a smart work and you have to put some less effort and you have to make some really cool stuff so one simple thing like we also did this like uh, people do projects like everyone does projects and we have to use database for a project so most of the people will use mysql which is a local database or db2 and install the database server on that what we use like in in, in our fifth semester project sixth semester in, and even all the hackathons we always use the aws relational database service so so this like you do don't need to re- do anything at all so you have to go to the aws website and you have to learn like 10 15 minutes of video will make you learn how to use this idea service you you should obviously have the knowledge of database and sql so that will be that will be required for even a local database as well so you can one of the thing is this that you can use some cloud databases for that and only thing is like you have to give just end points and the credentials different rather than using a uh, local database you can told that we are using a cloud database and we are hosted so we are handling the scalability kind of that and talking about again scalability you can yeah, deploy your projects on so like we also did this thing so we were like the project is done by three project partners right so all of our projects were uh, in world distributed computing so we used to connect the we used to turn on the hotspot of sapnil's phone and used to connect all the three pcs and we kind of made a network like one of the pro- project was a blockchain project and what we did was each each pc was a node of a blockchain network that was the thing was used even in a uh, smart india hackathon project we use distributed computation like our problem statement was there what we used was like used distributed computer and we had used like we had literally used we were six people and we had used literally six computer to a demo one single application so that had made really beautiful effect in that hackathon so that was the thing like distributed competition you can build so you don't need to do anything else like you have to maintain the ip addresses of different pcs and you have to make just connection you don't have to write different code as well you have to just copy the same code or if you are using some kind of repository like github and all you can just clone it and run that project locally in all all the machines and you can just connect it through using ip address and all being on the same network so i hope this answers your question you can ag- again ask in live if i am telling something wrong or i have not understood your question uh ml ha- uh, and you have said for example ml has lot of already built projects so you are ha- you are saying that there are lot of projects built in ml not not just in ml there are lot of projects built in all other domains and you can always use api so one thing you can do is like very short project can be you can use a lot of apis and you can develop mm-hmm. some simple application and rely on some other apis so api is something like someone else has developed it and you are just using the endpoints or your urls and getting that function done like google you can again map it with google like google search there is some endpoints slash search we hit some query uh like our apple example it will go in the query it will get some result similarly you can use some other services as well so like uh anything like lot of apis are available and you can use any apis and you can develop some part and you can integrate lot of apis and you can build some scalable architecture you can use cloud databases and you can use distributed system and all thing and this will be like kind of a cool project so if that answers again then if my domain of project is not related to domain in which company works and i don't know about the domain in which company works will that affect the selection so no it won't affect at all so at this point i can tell you that you are not so for final year students placements might be getting started from tomorrow and tomorrow there will be some company day after tomorrow there will be another company and so on you don't know in which company you are going to get placed in a single company also single company not works on just one single domain 
so in in a company there will be different divisions in dif in different divisions there will be a lot of different teams in single team also there might be a lot of domains or technologies involved so you cannot be at all sure like and it's always the case or most of the time it's the case that whatever you have learned or you have explored that will not be the same like you are assigned the team it's 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 kind of lucky thing but it's not that's why they test the data structure and algorithms and these fundamental subjects and like if you are knowing to develop some application if you know database you are, you are able to do efficient algorithms and you are comfortable with one of the framework then you can develop in other framework as well so that was regarding the domain so that will not affect as well you can choose whatever you are interested in that will be something additional but you will be tested upon the core subjects problem solving and your projects you are done so now i'm saying that you have done projects so i'm not saying that they will not just the domain so like we our team is hiring for uh, some cloud computing role and there is some aws stuff involved and they will not check like if you have done the projects on aws they will just like how good you have done the projects and eventually they will hire this is applicable for freshers so as i told like for experience hire there will be specific roles so there will be some role called as cloud developer on again so that depends upon the domain at that particular point you have to have some uh, projects related to domain but before applying you know right you are knowing that this role is for java developer and you should know java so that's the thing so that won't affect like what domains you are comfortable or your project related that's not related how should we roadmap how should we our roadmap means first to do which topic and then what topic after in cp how to select good articles from gfc learn by context or first learn and then contest so i can tell you like roadmap uh, so i have told the general roadmap for second and third year and if you are asking roadmap for competitive programming i would suggest you interview bit so you can visit the interview bit and you can visit the programming section and they have like beautifully they have arranged the sequence so like at the start they will explain you about time complexity then they will have problems on arrays math then binary search strings then bit manipulation and similarly linked list and similarly it will go on to graphs so they have aligned properly according to level besides interview bit there is also hackerer code monk and they have also have aligned tutorial like with starting from basics of input output how to take c in c out basics of that and with like till advanced concepts like graphs and all so interview bit and hackerer code monk i can say so there you can find the level and how to select good article from gfg like we cannot select good articles particularly you can search for whatever article you are want whatever concept you are and you can get start going like maybe gfg or any other website learn by contest or first learn and then contest as i told like you learning will never end so uh, at second year you will learn some basic data success algorithm in third year you might start learning dynamic programming and graph problem so it doesn't mean that if you are going to learn dynamic programming concepts in third year you should not at all participate in the contest in second year it's not like that you should always participate and if even if you are able to solve one problem or even if trying is important you, you will eventually run so learn by contest so yes i can say learn by contest and don't wait for learn learning will not get over at any point of your life so it will it's something continuous if another company offers you package more than current company will you accept it if no what makes you stay in goldman sachs okay so uh, like the question is like you are saying like if some company is asking uh, or giving some another offer and a bigger offer and will i go there so right now my answer is no why i tell you because uh, i had already i am already having two offers and you people might sound it cool to have like offers from four or five companies like he's having options he's having all fine companies and all but uh, during an interview process only you are not involved so the interviewers are involved hrs are involved so they are putting a lot of time and efforts for you to be hired and even if you are applying for any other additional company you have to spend your some weeks of time to again revise that concept so it's if if you are not going to join the company then it's no point at giving interview at all besides that talking about gs particularly uh, so what uh, if yes, what's the question what makes you stay in goldman sachs so 
I have interned in Goldman Sachs for six months and I have found like a really amazing team and they are really working on some like cool cutting in technology so that's why I'm kind of satisfied there besides that Goldman Sachs is one of the very prestigious company like you can always go and search like search on Google like how the prestige and all is besides that Gold Goldman Sachs is having an amazing alumni network so even a person if even if he leaves Goldman Sachs there is always some kind of alumni network and they are the network is huge and they are some like very amazing places so like at every great place you will find someone from Goldman so kind of that a great alumni network is there and obviously to be honest pay is great so Goldman is paying like more than a lot of product companies top techno technical product companies as well besides that they the values I've uh, learned here is like great like the leadership diversity they have like given a lot of importance here and you will find a lot of people there like more, like half of the people are only from computer science I found here like a lot of other people are from different bands so mechanical engineering so there is like kind of diversity and there are diverse people and not the same kind of people besides this I can say functional knowledge so we already know like what technology companies do so I can say that I I might get to learn some new functional knowledge with the finance side as it's a global investment bank I might get to learn something new and it will be kind of generic so it can so it, as it called it's fintech so finance plus tech so maybe I might get my interest some change at future time and so it's kind of a generic career besides that one of the very great thing Goldman Sachs offers for the freshers is like there is an orientation of uh, freshers like freshers that are hired in Goldman Sachs they have their orientation in the New York City so they you they take you to the US as a fresher uh, for one or two weeks and you have training and amazing exposure that they take you to the headquarters in New York City and you get to visit there you have orientation there unfortunately I'm not having that because of this COVID thing but still that's one of the perk and that I'm not just looking forward to that the team I have got and all is like amazing besides this and you, you have asked like if you get some more package so some recruiters have reached out to me from other like top product companies or startups so I have right, right now as I told like I was satisfied with the team and I'm really loving the work so I'm not, not interested to waste the time of both and like it's always like it's it's really uh, hard to tell no to some companies like if you're having offer it's uh, telling no is not something great thing like if you you might sound it cool or you might think it is cool to have multiple offers but while rejecting and while sending that mail that you will not be able to send it's not really good thing and it's not it's actually a kind of sad thing so besides that, that oh, I hope that answers development versus coding in industries I have already answered that in computer programming versus development so I had tell like something like application is equal to development plus performance I, I guess so both is needed development is needed to develop application your application should be efficient so data structure is coding it's algorithms are needed and there is another question how to prepare for examination for further studies like gate GRE so this is kind of like a completely different topic but for gate I would tell like a gate also involves of like all fundamental subjects so whatever subjects you are studying for the interviews they will be definitely helpful for the gate exam as well and so that's the thing there will be some additional things in gate exam so I have not given a gate exam so I have some like friends you can reach out to me I'll redirect you towards them like they have some crack gate and have good score so beside fundamental subjects there are some other subjects like theory of competition and a lot of fundamentals like second third subject second third year subjects is there in the gate gate exam and for GRE so GRE consists of again like quant and verbal so for verbal you have to uh, read a lot of words you have to develop your vocabulary so there will be some questions like sentence completion and all and quant, quant is like based on basic maths of say up to like 10 standard level or something I, I have not even appeared for GRE then I, again I am having some friends who have appeared and really scored well I can redirect to you so that's the thing for this so it's almost two hours now I didn't thought it will be going that long so so this is the last slide but I think I have answered most of the question but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enable the live chat and still if you're having some questions you might ask me live chat and still if you're having some questions you might ask me live chat and still if you're having some questions you might ask me live chat and still if you're having some questions you might ask me 
live chat and still if you are having some questions you might ask me live chat I think I had lost my internet connectivity and I am right now enabling the live chat and we have almost spent two hours and still if you are having questions we will spend some time and after that we can maybe conclude. I almost answered most of the questions and most of the session was like I had structured overall session was like based on the questions I had received and forms so, so I have right now enable the live chat and let's see if you're having any questions you can put there so i will uh, wait for like five more minutes or two four more minutes and if you're having some questions you can put or else we can conclude the session so there are some friends spamming here have you watched game of thrones how much time did you spend on j3 a lot of time i would like so i don't think this is a relevant question so if you're having some relevant questions i can definitely answer that You haven't given the name of LinkedIn pages. Okay, uh, I actually am having it in my notes and I'll be sharing you with through access groups or I'll tell the access just a second. Okay, I had call from the access number so yeah you haven't given the name of linkedin pages uh please name at least five six pages okay for now i can see like i have same some of the pages in notepad i will actually share the actual links there but there are so actually there are links so i have to open the page and all so there are some pages like job quest glitzar intern to job intern bait cosmos journey and behind the job man job seeker hub so there are actually links there i'll i'll definitely share those links with you they actually post a lot of opening at least like 10 to 15 openings daily and i would recommend you all to when you receive these links go through previous opening as well so they will be having open there as well so you haven't given given the name so i have answered that how many projects we should do uh, so how many projects you should do so i would tell you that quality is greater than quantity so even if you're having two good projects that's fine you have to like develop some good scalable projects even if it's one or two good projects that would be fine the number doesn't matter so if a person has done some seven eight projects and they're very short or he is not having some in-depth knowledge of that that's not help that's not going to be helpful even one or two projects which are great would help you so that i hope that answers that question how many questions coding and aptitude in online test test how many questions coding and aptitude in online test yes has asked this question so i'm assuming you are asking for goldman sachs for goldman sachs there were around 15 mcqs uh, which had negative marking and three coding problems was were there as i told uh, there were two two easy to medium level problems one advanced coding problem and two essay questions were there besides that Seven. how many total questions were there in first round in goldman sachs and how many were able you will be able to solve to crack for the interview so as i told like i had around three problems in each of the interview and the first round of the first the first problem of the first interview i was like 
I was kind of I, I didn't like didn't fail to solve it but it was not like kind of met the expectation of the interview rest of all problems I was able to solve so there were two more problems in the first round and in the following rounds as well second and third round there were three three more questions and I was able to solve these questions how to increase mathematical problem skill because generally in code forces first two to three questions are mathematical and brute four and constructive algorithm so i have not solved a single problem on code forces ever so i don't know i i'm not right the per, right person to answer that i i have just account on code forces i have never solved some problem so i was mostly using code chef and uh, i current and such kind of websites and you are asking mathematical problem solving skill uh, so i would like I have not like much worked on code forces in code chef I don't think there were like a lot of mathematical problems and mathematical problems are like uh, computer programming heavy so in interviews there are not a lot of mathematical problems asked like you might have some number theory problems and all you cannot like expect the, these problems in interview in some they are asked but for interview is not needed for computer programming if you are asking me I'm not really right person so I, I can redirect you to some people like Ajay Gunjal who has done some good mathematical problems in competitive programming. How to increase mathematical? Yeah, this is the same question. It's repeated. Yeah, means how many coding or apt you are able to solve in the online test? Okay, yes, she's asking for the Goldman Sachs test. Okay, for, so for the Goldman Sachs test, I was able to solve first two problems completely and one of the test is from second problem was remaining and the advanced coding section even that I was able to solve with one approach a couple of test cases were remaining for that I guess besides that not only coding problems the aptitude had a negative marking so I had attempted only question that I was very sure of and I didn't take any chance for like other questions and even I had given a lot of importance to essay questions so these kind of questions are generally asked in our club interviews so there were essay questions like what happens like if you are so one of the question okay i cannot tell actually question but it were some situational analysis based question vishal bose is how to approach a given problem mean first we should like some test test or directly think on solution so i'm i'm assuming you're asking for a general competitive programming so what you should do is first of all or even in interviews first of all you should understand the problem before jumping to directly jumping to write the uh, code for the problem like if you do like that you will have to change code multiple times and you will waste a lot of time so besides that you should first understand the problem and after you have understand the problems you should think of some algorithm like we will be using to solve that so after you have think some th th thought of some algorithm then you can move to the test cases so like to have some corner cases will this work for these cases and after you are pretty sure then you you should proceed to start writing the code means first you should write so yeah actually i was asking for the first coding ground after which you are able to appear for on-site interviews okay yeah the first coding round i answered that it was online test on hacker rank so as i told like almost i had solved all the problems but from second question one test case was remaining and from third question a couple of test cases remaining as like i was able to solve them all and you should like also give importance to the MCQs and I say questions as well. Also, they had taken resume. I don't know they had uh, done some re resume based screening. So overall, you had to score. That's the point. Some left. Okay. I think we are done with questions. I will wait for a couple of more minutes. If there are more questions, then I'll be happy to answer or else we can end. Then it's been a lot, it's been like more than two hours. Quite an insightful session would definitely inspire the brain. Now, this is one of my amazing project partner that's spamming here. Smith Deshmukh, your journey is quite inspiring. Thank you.
right insightful session would definitely inspire you ah, you are just copy pasting me cool so on the last slide i am giving my contact details like you can reach on linkedin or instagram and these slides of all the presentation like throughout this are available at this url slides slides.com slash access 2020 and i'll be adding some resources at the end of this presentation you can always come and have a look and that might be helpful for you so i see a present okay there are some questions was Veritas your first company that you have appeared in campus placement? No, uh, I had appeared for some other company, but I was not able to crack the aptitude test. Veritas was first company where I actually went for the interviews. So Veritas like was my first interview from college campus list. What is the level of question asked in interview comparing to code chef? Yeah, uh, so as I told in interview, interviews are focused on problem solving interviews are not focused on competitive programming so competitive programming will help you to get, gain the knowledge for problem solving right so we never compare the level of problems with code chef so you should start with code chef when you have developed some problem solving skill and if want if you want to prepare for the interviews you should start with these website like geeks for geeks and lead code and interview bit so they are in line with the level of interview us and there are also medium uh, there are also levels like easy medium hard and you can always do like different levels of questions according to conception all when is the right time to participate in hackathon what technology you learned before participating in it so my first hackathon was a global blockchain hackathon that was in mumbai so what technologies we had used so we had just learned some basic java and spring boot we had used for our project and these were the technology besides this like uh, Swapnil was really interested in cloud so he was having a lot of knowledge of cloud so it was his idea to use this cloud databases and make it a distributed project so uh, we use this uh, AWS relational database service besides that uh, we had like we had the project was based on blockchain so we had created a network of our own PC so we can see the, some kind of networking was involved in there lot not a lot of technologies where uh, i had learned before going to do my first hackathon but you can like you should know some development or you should have some developers in the hackathon so hackathon is not just about development right there will be some problem and you will be giving some solution you have to there will be a lot of different judging rounds will be there and besides this you have to pitch at the end so you also need some good communication skills to pitch the idea you are having Hope that answered your question yeah so these slides are available i'm already at the last slide and okay i have more question i'm getting quite good and cp but i have low cpi any advice what semester you are in and what is your cpi just put what semester you are in currently and what is your CPI based on that I can give you advice so second and 5.9 so you are in second semester okay so yeah you, ha you have just in second semester you are six semester still pending so uh, you can always like increase your pointer and again first year was like having subjects like mechanical engineering and like a lot of subjects which were not related to computer science but the subjects from second year and third year are really interesting if you are like passionate about computer science and you can try scoring so this will be again it's in in line so it's required for interview as well and uh, if you are doing it properly you will get a good point as well promoted to third semester yes so you have completed first semester uh, first year and you are in second year right now you can uh, anytime increase the pointer also i was also having some six point something pointer so it's 5.9 is quite close to six you can score like great pointer in your second and third year and fourth year and you will have that balanced don't worry about that you can anyways cover it 
Okay, so I think we let's stop. It's been two hours and fifteen minutes, and as I have shared my contact details, you can directly link me to ping me to LinkedIn or Instagram, and I will be happy to answer your questions. And the slides are available over here, so we can say that this session is officially over, and I will be now ending this presentation. In the live stream i would like to thank access again for inviting me and it was a great experience for me as well today it was my first live stream so i had previously given sessions in live in club services and all but this was like first time so i would like to thank you cool okay thank you hope you start something today and all the best for your future journeys